first and foremost, I want to say thank you to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If it wasn't for him, this wouldn't be possible. Low Nose Boxing. Hit the like button, share the video, leave a comment, subscribe. Last night, Tiafimo Lopez gets the victory over Steve Claggy. And I want to break down my assessment of what I saw and what I feel about that fight and the performance of Tiafimo Lopez, the kingpin at 140 pounds, right? I'm going to give you the good and I'm going to give you the bad. First, I'm going to give you the bad. Tiafimo Lopez spent too much time with his back on the ropes, looking to counter off that shoulder roll. He allowed Steve Claggett to put him on the ropes way too many times in that fight. Even though the fight was one-sided, even though Tiafimo Lopez, beyond a shadow of a doubt, won every single round of that fight, Tiafimo Lopez did not make the statement that he was supposed to make. Tiafimo Lopez is a special fighter. He's part of the Fantastic Five with Devin Haney, Shakur Stevenson, Ryan Garcia, and Javante Tank Davis. Tiafimo Lopez has consistently lived up to the stigma of a fighter who fights to the level of his competition. But he did get the victory. <clears throat> Once again, Tiafimo Lopez spent too much time with his back on the ropes. And then when he was moving around the ring, he was stepping back with his hands down, putting his face out there. I guess he was trying to bait Steve Claggett into throwing some shots so he can counter over the top. But he was still getting touched up with some jabs and some straight right hands every now and then, right? Tiafimo Lopez did get touched up, but he also showed some defense as well, which is part of the good, which, which is what I'm gonna get to in a minute. So he spent too much time on the ropes. He left his face exposed while he was moving back. He wasn't using the jab that much. He was only flicking the jab. He wasn't sticking the jab. He wasn't fainting the jab, but he was hooking off the jab every now and then. And then the times and the moments where Tiafimo Lopez was getting off big shots, mainly around the seventh and eighth round, where he visibly hurt Steve Claggett, he, put, he took his foot off the gas. Those are the things that I feel Tiafimo Lopez did wrong. Now, what I feel that he did do right, just as I critiqued his defense, he also showed good defense as well. He caught punches very well with his shoulder. He used his right hand a lot to catch and deflect a lot of blows. He used a lot of upper body and waist movement, very good head movement to slip and roll underneath punches, right? But once again, at times when he would land some big shots, rather than being defensively responsible and rolling out of the way, he would just stay there and get hit with the receipt, right? But he did show some good upper body head movement. I like that. I like how Tiafimo Lopez was hooking off of the jab. That's something that he could have done more, right? Another thing Tiafimo Lopez did do is he showed that he does have a very good inside work because that's something that he's been criticized for in the past. Uh, many people have said that Tiafimo Lopez hasn't shown inside work. A lot of times when he's on the inside, he would just tend to hold on, right? But he did show some good inside work. He did show some good body work. And he also showed an improvement in his stamina, which I'm not surprised because Tiafimo Lopez is one of the hardest workers in boxing. The guy's in, in phenomenal shape. He trains like a dog. So he fought at a very high pace. He threw a lot of punches and he made it through the 12th rounds and won the fight, clearly, right? But he did not make the statement that he should have made. If Tiafimo Lopez, what I feel he could have done better, he could have used the check hook a lot more to avoid being pinned on the ropes. He could have used the check hook a lot more to avoid getting pinned in the corner, sort of like Floyd Mayweather did against Marcos Maidana, sort of like Floyd Mayweather did against Ricky Hatton, sort of like Javante Davis did against Isaac Pitbull Cruz. Tiafimo Lopez spent a lot of time on the ropes catching shots. Kind of remind me of James Tony, because James Tony, which is one of my personal favorite fighters of all time, there were some performances in his career, right? You know where I'm getting at, because I'm a historian. I'm getting in my historian bag right now. James Tony had some performances where 
he didn't look that good against fighters that he should have just um, separated himself from. But with the exception of Roy Jones Jr., when James Tony took on what was perceived as a legitimate challenge, that's when James Tony would step his game up. But James Tony, unlike Teofimo Lopez, did have lapses within his training, within his eating habits, with his con within his conditioning. Teofimo Lopez doesn't have that issue. Which leads me to wonder, where is the lapse? Is it a mental lapse? Is he getting bored in there with certain guys? I don't know. But I feel like for Teofimo Lopez to continue forward, he's gonna have to work on some things. He's gonna have to start fading the jab more, sticking the jab more, instead of flicking the jab, hooking off the jab. I mean, I've seen some good things, like I said, the defense with the head movement, the catch and shoot was there, the body shots were there, but he could use the check hook more to avoid getting put on the ropes instead of fighting with his back on the ropes. When you outbox a guy like Pernell Whitaker, the term box circles around him, that's something that Teofimo Lopez needs to do. Use the jab and fight more in a circular manner, in a circular fashion, rather than fighting with his back on the ropes. Now, it's okay to fight with your back on the ropes every now and then, but do it on your terms, not for the whole entire fight. But Teofimo Lopez did get the victory, but he also proved once again that he's a fighter that fights to the level of his competition. Now, um, as far as Teofimo Lopez and fights down the road, there's still some good fights at 140 pounds. No, no need to rush up to 147 pounds. Isak Pitbull Cruz and Teofimo Lopez is a very, very good fight. At one point, I would say Teofimo Lopez would outclass Isak Cruz, but based on what I seen last night, that's sort of like a 60-40 for Teofimo Lopez. In order for Teofimo Lopez to be victorious against Pitbull Cruz, he cannot spend so much time on the ropes. He's gonna have to keep the fight in the middle of the ring as much as possible. And whenever he, whenever his back is about to, to touch the ropes, he gotta use that check hook to get out of that trap. Sort of like Javante Davis did, but he did it from a southpaw stance. You got Liam Powell, who's an interesting fight. You got Keyshawn Davis, right? Even though Keyshawn Davis is at 140, 135 pounds, being that he keeps calling out Teofimo Lopez, I wouldn't mind seeing Keyshawn Davis go to 140 and take on Steve Claggett or take on, um, what's the guy named, Elvis Rodriguez. And if he can get past Elvis Rodriguez, then the Teofimo Lopez versus Keyshawn Davis is a big fight. Plus, they have an inbuilt storyline. As for Teofimo Lopez, we could also see a rematch with George Cambosis Jr., right? If Teofimo Lopez would have taken apart Steve Claggett the way that he was expected to, I would say, nah, going back to George Cambosis is a step going backwards, right? But based on the fact that Teofimo Lopez did not perform to that level against Steve Claggett, I still want to see that rematch. I feel that's a fight that Teofimo Lopez needs to finally put the pads behind him for good and move forward. That's what I want to see for Teofimo Lopez. He also has the potential winner of Arnold Barboza and Jose Ramirez. That's a fight for Teofimo Lopez down the road. Javante Davis versus Teofimo Lopez somewhere down the road, right? He got some good fights at 140 pounds. Even um, Subaru Matias, despite the fact that Subaru came off of a loss like Devin Haney, but unlike Devin Haney, Subaru Matias was not brutally demoralized. So definitely him and Teofimo Lopez is a good fight. Um, if him and Teofimo Lopez were the next fight lined up, this fight last night with Steve Claggett is the perfect fight to prepare him for Subaru Matias and the pressure that he employs. Now for Steve Claggett, even though he took his first loss in nine fights, Steve Claggett had the type of performance where even though he was dominated, it was still a moral victory because he went 12 rounds against Teofimo Lopez. He displayed a granite chin. He has very good fundamentals, keeps his hands up high, pretty underrated defense, throws nice straight punches. He's not a bum. He's not a bum. We got to stop talking bad on fighters just because they have losses. It's about what you do afterwards. Steve Claggett is a fighter that rebounded from that and got better. Just like Sandor Martin, a lot of people say, oh, Sandor Martin lost to lost to Yigit, but he turned around and beat Mikey Garcia, right? And gave Teofimo Lopez, uh, uh, he gave Teo some fits. Sandor Martin improved, 
We can't just throw fighters away just because they have losses. And life, when you suffer a setback, you don't give up, right? You keep it moving. You improve in your life. You can do time in prison, come back out, get your mind right, pick up a trade and land a good job, meet somebody with a connect, and then land a freaking career somewhere because you was in the right place at the right time and you chose not to give up. So for Teofimo Lopez, I feel like I said before, he has some things he has to work on. But like I said in a previous video, Teofimo Lopez is the last man standing at 140 pounds. Beyond a shadow of a doubt. He had a dominant performance last night as far as he won 12 rounds without losing, but it wasn't a scintillating performance. But once again, it doesn't mean that he's not an extraordinary fighter. We just got to see him in there with someone that's going to motivate him to that level. But I would like to see Teofimo Lopez to take care of business against guys like Steve Clagg, guys like that, that he's supposed to take out. See, this is the reason why, for me, Javante Davis is ranked a little bit higher than Teo on the pound for pound list because Javante Davis is more consistent. Teofimo Lopez has all the tools, and he's my favorite fighter, right? But I'm going to critique my favorite fighter at the end of the day. Nevertheless, shout out to Teofimo Lopez for still um, remaining the champion, the top dog at 140 pounds. And um, hit the like button, share the video, leave a comment, subscribe to my channel, Low Nose Boxing, for a reason. Because Low Nose Boxing, I'm out.